Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and this is number six, transformations as part of my exam questions series. These questions are mainly common questions um, as this topic is roughly grade four or five, so there's not many tricky questions. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, the first question when I scroll down, it says reflect S in the line Y equals X. Well, the line y equals x is a line that goes through all the points where y equals x. So 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5, 6 and 6, 7 and 7, etc. So I draw a straight line going through these points. That should do it. And because it's a diagonal line, I have to see how far each corner is diagonally to the line. So that's half a square there. So I go half a square on the other side and I get my new point. That's one whole square, so I go one whole square on the other side and get my new point. And finally, this is one and a half, so I go half and one. Once I've got all three of my points, I can just connect up the dots. And I have my perfect transformation. It says label the new triangle R. Though I don't think you'd lose marks if you didn't. Uh, translate S by the vector minus 4. So the top number means left or right. And because it's negative, it means left. So I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces left. And the bottom number means up or down. And because it's negative, it means down. So 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now it's important to remember which point you translated. And that's the bottom left corner. So when I redraw my shape down here, I start from the bottom left corner. And I will call that one T. Perfect. And that's that question done. Okay, next one, we have a rotation here and it's asked us to write down what that transformation is. So for rotation, you need four, four bits of information. First off, you have to say rotation or rotate or rotated. Next, you will need to know where the center is. Now, this is quite tricky. You have tracing paper in your exam, which is very helpful, and I would recommend using it. But if you don't have tracing paper, there is a way of finding the center. And that's by drawing a straight line between two corresponding points. Now, these two points are the same on the triangle because these are the, the tip of the triangle and then drawing a perpendicular bisector so a line which goes splits the red line in half and splits it at right angles so it's going to look like this now the center will be somewhere on this green line and I suspect it's going to be right here and let's double check that so if I draw an L shape from that point to there, then I rotate that L shape around, then that L shape will come up and it will hit that point. So that is good. So the center is minus two, three. And that has been rotated 90 degrees, it's a quarter turn. And it's been rotated this way around, which is uh, clockwise. Oops. Okay, so you say rotated around that point, 90 degrees clockwise. Uh, another translation question. We have two on the top, which means to the right. So I'm rotating shape A. Uh, sorry, translating shape A. So two to the right, one, two, five down, one, two, three, four, five. Pay attention to which shape, what corner you moved. So draw it from that corner and we get this and we label that C. Okay, next question. We are have been asked to enlarge by a scale factor of a half from this center point. So in order to enlarge, what I will do is I will get from the center and I will see how how I can get from the center to one of the corners. 
So that's two up and four across. And then I have to apply the scale factor of a half. So if I half that motion of two up and four across, then that now becomes one up and two across. And this is where my new point is. So we'll do that again. Uh, to get to the other corner, I can go two down and four across. If I half that, it becomes one down and two across. That's where my new corner is. And finally, the last corner is uh, two up and six across. So halving that will be one up and three across. And now I have all of my corners. I just connect them up like this and we're done. Okay, another enlargement and again of a scale factor of half. This time I have to find the center myself. So one, two is there. And then I go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two up. And that becomes five along and one up. So that's my new corner. And what I could do from here is I could draw this shape, but each of the side lengths being halved might save me some time rather than working out every corner. So the base is four, so I draw it halved to two. The height over here is six, so I'll half that to three. The top is eight, so I'll half that to four. And then finally, I'll just connect up the shape. Next question, we're asked to rotate 90 degrees clockwise around zero two. So first off, zero two is um, no across and two up. And if I don't have tracing paper, then I will draw an L shape to get to that corner there. And then I'll just rotate that L 90 degrees clockwise. So that would look like this. And that would be my new corner coordinate would be right there. And then I'll do the same for the uh, another L. I'd go up and across. And then I would rotate that L around. So it'll be two and then four down. And then I would draw that coordinate there. And then finally, I'll do the last corner, which is four along and one down. So rotating that around, it'll be four and one across. And that would be my new set of coordinates. And then I would join them up. And I would rotate that shape. Uh, another translation, so minus one means one to the left, and minus three means three down, one, two, three. So there's the new coordinate, that was this one. I can then just draw the shape from there, so that's two along, three up, diagonally down, and then one down. Okay, I've been asked to reflect in the line x equals one. So x equals one is the line where all the x coordinates are one. So one minus four, one minus three, one minus two, one minus one, one zero, one one, one two. You get the idea. And then it says, yes, yeah, so reflect this shape. So if I were to draw this line on, and the distance uh, at right angles from the line to the point there is two. So it has to be two on the other side. Up here, that distance is four. So it's got to be four on the other side. And finally, this distance here is four. So it has to be four on the other side as well. Then connect up the dots. and label the new shape R. And then it says R is mapped onto S by a reflection in the line Y equals zero, which is the X axis. 
So let's do that then. Let's reflect in the line y equals zero. So that would go up like that. This would be up here. And we would connect up like that and like that. And then it says describe fully the transformation that maps Q onto S. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this so I can see it nice and clearly. And we might notice that this is a rotation by 180 degrees. So I'd write rotate did by 180 degrees. And then we need to find where the center point is. So I can see this corner here and that corner there. If I draw a line connecting them. And then also this corner here and this corner here. If I draw a line connecting those. And then finally we can look at this corner here and this corner here. And if I were to draw a line connecting those. You can see they all go through that point there. And when you rotate by 180 degrees, you're going to get them all going through the same point. And so that center point is 1, 0. And that's rotations done. Thank you for watching. And let's move on to the next topic.